Welcome aboard, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. It is time for chapter two of this Seven C Second Edition actual play presented by Brooke and Rass. I am uh, Danny. I'm Danny, and I will be running this shinding. And we, um, this is the Seven C Second Edition is done by Chaosium. We aren't affiliated with them. We just like their game. So without uh also during the stream uh before i get into uh having everybody introduce themselves and get into the game um you can buy things for the game uh in in the chat if you look at the little magnifying glass there there are options to go ahead and uh, get danger points or hero points whatever um so <laughs> now we're gonna go and and uh, go ahead and introduce as i said i'm danny i will be uh running this game well as much as you can i like to say i'm just i just you know do things i don't actually run anything i just you know but um i will do my best let us start with ala go ahead and introduce yourself and your character Hi friends, you might remember me from Sunday's game, but I'm also playing in this game. Uh, and this time I'm playing Nanette Prevert, who is um, a hot mess. Yes, awesome. Uh, John? Hi, uh, I am John and I play Giovanni Messina and uh, I am a Vodachi rogue. Awesome. Roxy? Hello, my name is Roxy, and I play Amelia McJohnson uh, from the Highland Mar Marches, and I am a singer. Mm-hmm. Michael. I am Michael Tipton, and I will be playing Andreas Carls. Uh, I am a Sumatian common member of the Sumatian Commonwealth, as well as a duelist and a sorcerer. And introduce that that gentleman behind you. Oh, oh this this one? I'm not sure about his name. Their name? I'm not sure. Getting. I have two parts, two parts, but, you know, yeah. yeah, it's just such teeth pulling to get any of the other ones out. Usually costs <laughs> me something. Cool. Uh, I'm going to look to Roxy and John, see if I forgot anything before I get this, anything they uh, need to announce or say before we go ahead. And now we're good. We'll uh, do upcoming announcements one... at break. All right. Perfect. Okay, then. Uh, just as a quick reminder before I get into the opening narration, we had Nanette down below, and she had just found this box after helping Charles Exeter look for it. But she doesn't fully trust him. So she kept it to herself and told a fib that she had not found anything. Whoops. Uh, Amelia was, she just started blasting. She was just started blasting people off the whisper as they were trying to board. And she was just doing quite a lot of damage with that. And um, Andreas had assisted a little bit by shining some light and blinding some people. And then assisting with a rope so that Gianni, in true 7C fashion, could fly over to the other ship and land and attempt to sabotage the other ship. So, with that, we are going to go ahead and begin. Once again, we see our table in front of us with the hand tool leather tome that says by leaps and bounties on the cover with our four symbols of the sorte deck, the sword, the gun, the blunderbuss, and the veil. And it opens. This time, a few more pages are brought with it as the book opens. And we see Chapter 2, Whisper of Fate, written at the top of the page. Below is a black and white picture. And we see Gianni standing on the top of, on a, on a deck in this black and white photo, uh, drawing. And below it. It says, as a historian, I have learned that, in fact, not everyone who reaches back into history can survive it. 
And it is not only reaching back that endangers us. Sometimes history itself reaches inexorably forward for us with its shadowy claws. That is Elizabeth Kostova from The Historian. Fabulous book. And as written below the photo, we zoom in on the photo. And it starts to gain life. We see Gianni's clothes start to, to ruffle in the breeze. His color starts to come in into frame. And the smell of the sea and the storm and thunder uh, that had been raging comes into play. And the first word we hear, you have stepped aboard the whisper, surrender. Gianni, to you, what are you going to do? I am uh, honored the captain, and I, I'm actually going to sign this back to the captain. Ah, okay, so you're going to sign. All right. I am honored, captain, that you would take the time to approach me and talk to me about this. Thank you very much. But I must ask by your attire, are you a true son of Adachi? He considers first he, he expresses a little surprise that you are signing back to him. And but he looks at you and he says uh well he signs and his interpreter, the the smaller more rotund man next to him uh, says um, he starts signing back to you and he says I did once call that country my home but now the sea is my home very good then you will understand what I wish to show you and I will reach into a satchel at my side and I will hold out a uh, a card uh, and, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of day guard, and I will, uh, show him the, uh, five of swords that I had drawn earlier. The, uh, I wish to inform you that the Striga on board the ship across from here wishes me to impart this card to you. And I hold it out to him. Hmm. He holds out his hand and says, keep your card. And then he gestures some men to come forward and they look like they are about to uh, take you into custody. I'm sorry that this has been uh, the way it turns out. I actually say this out loud. I will not uh, be signing this. But I'm basically like, very well. It is a bri brave man indeed who wishes their strands to be interwoven with the strega of the Villanova. And I will jump off the ship after saying that. You're going to jump off the ship into the water? Uh, I what? would actually like to hopefully find a rope uh, to swing okay. across on. All right. Uh, a little bit of flair, a little bit of panache, hoping there's a rope. Okay. So give me a second. We're going to leave you there with Gianni lunging off the ship, maybe with a flourish of a bow. And um, and you will make a roll, but hold that thought for a moment. Um, Andreas, you have just... You, you can probably see this. The ships are... are, are I also understand down. every bit of it because I am also a linguist and therefore am fluent in, uh, fluent in sign language. So I'm like... Yeah. Uh, I'm going to um, attempt to uh, grab a rope and um, yeah, that's what I'll do. So um, we're on the we're on the I'm on the rail. So I'm going to grab one of the ropes that's there for people to tie themselves off. That's our hopefully already been belayed on, and I'm going to grab a hold of it jump off and then try to swing in an arc as I run down the side of the uh as I run down the side of the boat, reaching my arm out to try to grab Gianni mid fall. 
All righty then. So Michael's like, oh no. So to, to swing into it. Um, <laughs> and I am going to um, spend my hero point to, uh, and hopefully one of the races I get to activate um, my sorcery to increase my speed. So I'll act before everyone else. So okay. I'm going to I'm going to use my Davis to give me uh, to give me my increased speed. Okay, hold that thought, um, Amelia. Uh, you know you're blasting away. You have definitely seen all this going on. Um, the captain, uh, Captain Wheel, is is standing as he was, and you know everyone's running around and shooting, and he is staring at Silent Death across the way. How far, he is standing resolute. How far from him am I, would you say? I from was the shooting captain as they boarded, the so... Whisper. Uh, I, I'm... How far am I from the captain, my captain? Um, I'd am say I, not too far. Okay, I'm close enough to perhaps uh, shout at him. Yes, you're, you're within shouting distance. Friend of yours, captain! No friend of mine. Keep shooting! Take off the planks! Don't let them board! <laughs> and he starts shouting orders. All right. Uh, if I can see the captain of the... Uh, captain or who I might presume to be the first mate of the Whisper, I'm going to take aim. All righty then. Cool. We will leave you there and we will come back to your roles. Uh, Nanette, you were down below having just found um you know this this box and and lined you hear all sorts of commotion above you and thunder um you know the thunder raging and you hear the water and and the boat is you know i mean even this huge long hauler this sea is not is not calm um and it feels like it's gotten worse um however um, you're, you're where you are, um, you hear some footsteps. Amongst all of that, you hear some, uh, footsteps nearby. Not yours, obviously, or, or Charles, who is across, across the room from you. I've still got everything kind of hidden away. I, I'm assuming I'm still digging through various trunks and smalls in the attempts to look like I'm helping Charles. Yes. Um, but at the sound of footsteps, I kind of whirl around and, you know. Okay. You see, and, and you are, um, you, you turn around, you hear footsteps, and then you hear this kind of screeching that you've heard before when your brother has uh, done Porte magic. Okay. <laughs> it's sort of like this, this wailing, like... Oh yeah, very familiar with it. Screaming almost. Not a fan. Nanette, like, drops uh, whatever under ruse she was holding at the time and just, like, scrambles back in a panic uh, and pulls out the little knife she stole from the kitchens. They were definitely Treasure Island under ruse uh, that you... <laughs> Treasure Island under ruse. <laughs> All right. So, okay, now that we know what everybody's going to do, let's do some rolls and see how this all plays out. Um... I'm going to go ahead and have Gianni, you are going to do uh, finesse and athletics for your role to, to leap off and, and grab a hold of the rope. Um, Andreas, so you will be doing um, finesse and athletics as well to leap off and catch him and go ahead and spend your, your hero point if you were going to do so. And... Amelia, you're going to be doing um, uh, Wits and Aim. And for Nanette, 
um, in order to kind of keep your feet amongst all of this and, and not, uh, not fail, um, you are going to be rolling your, let's see, finesse and sailing, which I don't think you have, uh, much of, um, so for this, um, so you need one raise to go ahead and do your action that you were trying to do, okay? For Gianni, your consequence is going to be um, the consequences of which, so you need to spend your raise and you'll need to spend another one not to take, not to fall into the drink at all. So, you know, you can grab a hold of the rope, yeah, have another raise to hold on to it. And you will need a third raise to make sure you don't take any wounds from the rope or knocking into anything. Okay? All right. Uh... So for me, uh, I rolled a seven, a three, a four, and a six, and then nine and a two. So that is three raises with nothing left over. Okay, perfect. All right, for Michael, you're going to need to go ahead and make your roll. So you'll need one raise to uh, grab a hold of Gianni. You will need another raise to make sure you are not injured doing so, and you will need another raise to make sure you do not fall into the drink performing this, this feat. I have three races and two dice if you'd like to purchase them. Debating, do I want to give you more hero points or do I want the danger points? <laughs> yeah, I think I do. Actually, go ahead and take your two hero points. All right. Amelia, you're going to be making your roll. You will need a, um, a raise to take the shot. You will need another race to not get shot yourself, uh, dodging. Um, and you will need a third race to not uh, get grappled by the pirates who are starting to actually come aboard the ship now, pretty close to you. Can I make an argument to use finesse instead of wits? Sure. Okay. Is that I, will right? this is, this, I will say this is dexterity, so which is pretty much what finesse is. Okay, cool. So it gives me one extra die. So I'm also taking a bonus for, um, well, you tell me. So I, I was going to take a bonus for, where'd it go? Sea legs, which gives me a bonus die when doing a physical risk mm -hmm. while the ship is moving. So I assume that this counts. Yes, okay. absolutely counts. Um, and then I also have um, Eagle Eye. I'm not sure how far I am from... Uh, silent death but uh you know to kind of pick him out you're a fair amount i'd say it's good you can take that okay okay i just wanted to make wanted to make sure before i rolled now since i was rolling similar rolls i was rolling the finesse aim during this same scene last time do i not get the bonus die that's correct i'm gonna say on a new session we're just gonna go ahead and take your extra bonus if you haven't uh, okay. done done the roll before okay cool so and then uh, Nanette, so you will need, um, you know, a raise to stay on your feet and a raise to uh, not injure yourself, uh, you know, trying to get into a defensive position. For sure. Well, even with three dice, I would like to save my bonus die for something else, <laughs> if possible. Uh, but with three dice, um, I rolled a 10, a 7, and a 5. So two raises. Two. Okay, so you do well. Uh, you manage. Okay, so let's do this. Uh uh, Gianni, how many uh, raises did you get? Three with no extra, right? And how many did Andreas get? Three with two extra that you purchased. Okay. And Amelia, how'd you do on your roll? I got, um, let's see, I got a uh, one and a nine, two sixes and fours, uh, a three and an eight, and then I have one left over. So I got four raises. And I also have a question from the chat. And that is, okay. can the chat, if they buy a hero point, can it just be on the table for somebody who needs to use it? Or do they need to assign it to somebody? No, we can have a floating hero point. Okay, sounds good. But yeah, I got four, four successes with one, four raises with one extra. Okay. All right. Sweet. All right. Cool. So, here we go. Gianni leaps off the ship as this crack of thunder happens. 
He manages to grab onto the rope with one hand. And in the other, he finds his hand finding another hand as Michael grabs onto him uh, to help him go over to the ship. Um, Y'all can describe if you want to add any more on how that looks or anything particular you say or do. The way I had it in my head is that uh, Andreas basically jumps over the side and the rope is in between. So you're grabbing one that's a little bit lower and Andreas is doing one of those like holding the rope with one hand and running across the side of the boat grabbing you and then as they reach the other end of the arc he's literally just tossing you over tossing you on using the momentum and both of them basically just are in midair as we do our next uh as basically both of us are in midair for our next approaches <laughs> i land with a flourish and i look over at you and i like i'm like andres correct yes thank you for the hand no problem oh i will admit though andreas was moving faster than people should be able to. All right. Okay, so let's, uh, and then as for awesome. So you are now back on the Utrecht. And uh, yeah, Amelia, you you take your shot and uh, you manage you manage to hit and not get grappled and uh, not get shot yourself. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, you do that. Um, you see him flinch a little. You see him. You see him turn his head, and now he has seen you. So now he is. He is looking at you, and it does not look like he is too happy about it. I keep my gaze as level as I can in the rain. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, Nanette, you managed to keep your feet and you managed to uh, not injure yourself and pull out, you know, the little knife that you had and everything like that. Just in time to see reality sort of split itself down in the galley. And, uh, gentlemen, and what you recognize as very fine montane clothes, uh, steps through and he has two very piratey looking individuals with him. Oh man, if I could just mental imagery, the net with like her disheveled hair, like makeup all askew, <laughs> just like as far away as possible with this dinky, probably rusty knife. <laughs> <laughs> May I help you, <laughs> messieurs? <laughs> he turns to, to look towards you and he gestures the, to the men uh, on either side of him and they start um, going through the bottom of the ship, uh, working. It looks like they're kind of working to see if there's anybody below. A lot of, one of them grabs a hold of Charles on the other hand and grabs him like by the coat. And Charles, you know, his glasses fall off and they just manhandle him, kind of duck walk him up, you know, and start walking him out of the galley uh, towards, towards the stairs. Well, the gentleman comes over to you and uh, he does a bow and he offers his hand to you. Um, she's the same sort of deer in the headlights, kind of like, and eventually like the, something clicks and she's like, okay. <laughs> and, and takes his hand. <laughs> okay. Well, before you, he realizes he does not have it, so you you were about to... Well, I'll let you decide how she handles this. You realize he hasn't put his gloves back on, so his hands kind of look like they are uh, kind of covered in blood from what he had just, from what he had just done, so... Uh, I feel like she's probably used to that. Tomas is a little shit, so... <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, she's... she's probably mentally okay enough to be like oh this 
Those are just red gloves. This is fine. <laughs> and uh, he says, I did not expect to find such a beautiful flower on such a ship. Thank Whatever. you. <laughs> Is everybody, it says we're back on. So let me know if that's the case. Hello. It crashed okay. during uh, your little exchange there. Oh, perfect. I'll have to do that. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> saw that train wreck. <laughs> it was fine. Hopefully we weren't gone very long. Is but uh, do sum I... up uh, this this unknown montane looking clothed individual offered his hand to her and suggested she might want to follow him up to the deck. And Nanette was so convinced to do Seems so. Seems like a nice guy. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, okay, so um, Gianni, you are now uh, on, on, back on the Utrecht. And Pirates have started to, um, have started to board. Uh, they've started to put planks over. They've pulled the, the boat a bit closer. Um, so there are some, um, pirates, uh, you know, coming, coming on board the ship. And the crew around you have, a uh, you know, started to, to arm themselves as well. Uh, I'm going to well, wait. Not to, they have been, but you know, they're 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 getting ready to to accept these these pirates or push them off rather. I'll I'll wait for uh, a couple pirates to start trying to come over on a plank, and I'll go ahead and use pull on one in the back to try and knock them all off. Okay, all right. Hold that thought, Andreas. What are you going to? Uh, you you see the same thing. We are now um, on uh, now. We, now that we are back on the ship, uh, Andreas will re-pull his blades, and I guess he will just begin to engage um, a group of them, basically making his way through with sla with quick slashes and cuts. Hmm. All right, Amelia. All right. Uh, if shooting the captain didn't seem to do a whole lot, uh, and there are other boarders encroaching on uh, on my position, then I'm going to once again just try to uh, pluck off as many as many boarders as I can. Mm -hmm. All right. And Nanette, you are working your way uh, up to uh, the deck with your uh, your gentleman here. Very compliant. Yeah. Um, to describe what he looks like, like I said, he's wearing very fine montane clothes. Obviously a porte mage to your eyes. Um, and these aren't common montane clothes. They are, you know, like noble type clothes. Um, as well. That totally and... admires his fabric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. And he kind of looks, um, you know, I'm going to say he kind of looks a bit like um, he's not that that old seeming. Um, and he seems pretty fit. I'm going to go maybe like a Chris Evans type kind of clean cut. Mm. You know? With or without Excuse beard. Me. Wait, where's this, where's this person? Hold on, hold on. With or without beard. This is important. Uh, I'll without. take either. <laughs> without. It's, a, it's a Montaigne. Montaigne. Oh, Montaigne's Montaigne. going to have, yeah. <laughs> a little moustache. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Chris Evans with a moustache. To the top deck. I will be distracted though. So leave him down oh, yeah. below deck. <laughs> <laughs> Who isn't? <laughs> um you know, just to give you a a vibe. All right. So you all preparing uh you know or doing what you are doing and um this is loud enough for you, for you all to hear as you're coming up onto the deck Nanette and everybody else is preparing to um you know get uh get get prepared for for pirates um the the man who's been speaking for uh silent death and translating 
um, raises his voice and he says, Captain Wheel, did you think I would confront you if I didn't think I would have the upper hand? Surrender now and you may still save your ship and what's left of your crew. Captain Wheel does not seem uh, particularly uh, moved by this. And he says, continue. And, you know, fight. Fight for the Utrecht. And uh, we're going to have you do all your roles and see how you all are uh, uh, quitting uh, yourselves. And um, so let's have Gianni. You're going to do yours first. Um, some pirates are, are about to kind of coming after you. So let's go ahead and make that a... Uh, you're using your sword? Sword? Uh, for me? Yeah. What are you using to fight? I'm this? just using literally a pull uh, from my sorte. I'm going to take a lash. Oh, okay. You're going to take a lash and dump that plank. That's what you're doing. Okay. Essentially, I want I want to knock a few of them into the drink. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um. You 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 take your lash. So now you have three that you have taken. Uh. Pretty recently. Um. Just so that we're we're keeping track of that. And uh, the the plank seems to almost like splinter. Like like you pulled from the middle of it, and three pirates kind of tumble down. Uh. Uh. Into the water. Um, however, um, let me see, let's see, let's see how well they do it. Let me just see my little thing. All right. However, one of them, uh, manages to grab one of the crew of the Utrecht before he, he, he tumbles and he is now pulling this man over with him. Uh, I'll try and save him if I can, but, I, you know, if I, if I can't take any other actions, you know, I'll leave it to somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, your action was to kind of do that and, and that's what happened. And three pirates have gone into the drink, but one of them has managed to, uh, grab onto, um, one of the other members. Andreas, you're pulling out your swords. Um, you do see this, um, all of this happen. So, um, are you just going to kind of attack the closest one? What's going to be your, your strategy? You're going to wait for them to come to you and attack. I you? think I'm going to make my way through them, like moving quickly and like slashing and, uh, basically, basically being just like a wall of moving blades moving, like going through them as best I can. Okay. All right, cool. Figuring staying on the move is better for me than potentially getting iso like isolated and surrounded. Okay. So, um, yeah, and you wanted to use, you used your hero point, right? And you were uh, going to Yes, I have used my hero point. Uh, that was, though, for the action to save um, yeah, uh, yeah. Gianni. Yeah, okay. So you're going to be doing uh, finesse and, um, you know, weaponry. I suppose, yep. unless you're going to do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to use my finesse pull as opposed to my wits pull. All right, cool. So um, go ahead and, and just tell me how many raises you get. Oh, wow. I hope my that's dice a good this out. My dice really liked this action. Nice. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and use my reroll, see what happens. Wow. Um... Holy crap. Um, two, three, four. Man, I wish I could do 15s. Um, I rolled mostly. I have one die below a five. Everything else is six through 10, like mostly eights and nines. Um, so four raises with one extra die. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, you know just say that's how many you know you're gonna you're gonna take out each each action there. Um, so you're just kind of wailing through uh, 
through some pirates at that point. Um, Amelia, so you're just going to be taking at the surrounding uh, pirates, or I the... am. Uh, and I was I was going to ask, could I also uh, shout out to my fellow uh, comrades around me and. Uh, can I do that yeah. as well? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As yeah. I'm as I'm leveling shots, I think Amelia is more than capable of shouting and shooting at the same time. Okay, I was hoping so, but yeah, she. <laughs> uh, I would actually like to activate my, perhaps my virtue, which is uh, commanding, uh, and if mm -hmm. I activate it, uh, you can give HP to all the other heroes. Um, Sweet. So everybody can take a hero point. Yeah, and I'm going to shout out to everyone around me and just be like, keep that man off the captain. <laughs> nice. Nice. I do have a quick question. Does this count as resorting to my blade for it to defend a noble cause? Um, well... I'd say this is more so you don't know what cause you're you're exactly Fair. doing right now. So, <laughs> you know, um, so I'm going to say not at this point. <laughs> um, okay, with uh, with my role, I'm going to use my, because uh, I have a three. Oh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, you're doing your finesse and aim, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, so yeah. I have three successes with two dice to buy. If you wish. Three, three races. Okay. Oh, yes. yes right. I'm sorry. Three races. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I don't think I'm going to buy that, but um, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And yeah, you're going to take out three of them. Um, you know, you guys have just been blasting, but they seem to not be. I mean, he has quite, I mean, he seems from your guess, Amelia, and your experience with these sorts of things, he's come prepared. I mean, he was definitely coming after the Utrecht and he came prepared with men uh, to, to overwhelm for sure. Anyone else who had experience uh, in battles and stuff like that, perhaps Andreas would probably realize the same thing as well. Um, so uh, with that, um, Gianni took out the plank. Andreas took down like four of them. Amelia took out another three. You guys are just fighting on top of this on 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 this deck here um nanette you are are walking beside this man and you realized that there is more coming behind you and you see them like bringing maybe a couple people from the crew with them that they found uh it seems you know they're kind of moving them in front of them they are you're kind of walking up the stairs and you hear people behind you and you look and you see some more pirates, um, you know, bringing a couple of the crew members, including Pip and Squeak, um, behind you. And no. not so, the kids. So yeah, just keep in mind we do have safety protocols in place, and so just you know, just, just in sorry. case. That was just a. Just, just, that yeah. was more a, a just, joke. just in case. A dramatic <laughs> effect. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just in case. So yeah, you know, including Pip and Squeak who are kind of, you know, like huddled next to each other as they're being brought up the stairs behind you. And some of these pirates look like um, they've been in the water as well. Well, I'm going to do something stupid. And... All right. <laughs> Always approved. <laughs> Prick my own finger with the knife. And try to subtly mark the box in my pocket. She thinks she knows how it works. <laughs> She's seen her brother do it. And she okay. thinks maybe it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You will, you will do that. So we will, um, and you have, um, what do you have with Porte? Like what, what abilities do you have, if any, with it? Uh, so, it's it's honestly kind of vague, but I have two ranks in sorcery, so I can mark a lot of objects. She hasn't yeah. marked any objects, though, so. All right, cool. All right, so, yeah, so you can, uh, you, uh, you know, uh, that, that can be a thing. 
So you will, you will, you will do that. And um, you come up onto the deck and it is just absolute uh, chaos when you, when you finally emerge uh, from the deck. And, um, and, you know, you see, you see Gianni and Andreas and Amelia and they're just, they're fighting and, and all of this stuff. And when you come out there and the thunder is super loud and you see that there is this huge ship now that, that it was next to you. Cause I think you've been below the whole time. So you wouldn't have seen, uh, the pirates just, so now you see the whisper with its, with its flag uh, very close. There are grappling hooks that are come over. Planks are being brought over. Um, you know, it's just, and people are trying to prevent that. People are shouting. Um, all of that is going on. Okay. So you've, you've marked, the others took their, took their fighting and you marked, uh, the box. So, um, at this point, another um you you the other three of you who are on deck um would see that that Nanette and Charles I mean Charles is being very loud I mean even amongst you know all the fighting and stuff he's protesting very much that he is being handled this way um um so he 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 you know his glasses are gone and you know he's saying unhand me you know right this instant do you do you have any idea the tape just leave me alone <laughs> and he's you know he's just he's just kind of kind of struggling and everything and then a little while later Nanette comes up um next to this man who looks you know not dressed like any of the other pirates or anything like that um with some pirates and some of the, a couple of the other crew, maybe two or three plus the cabin boys, um, Pip and Squeak, uh, being led onto, onto the deck. And, um, the, the gentleman next to you, Nanette, he sort of raises his hand like this and signals over to the whisper and the captain nods and turns and he signs and the interpreter uh shouts over and he says captain wheel we have already taken over your below decks you cannot hope to win give us what we have come for so i'll give you a second mm. And it's at this point when, um, you know, the captain shouts and he kind of, you know, he's signing and everything like that. Um, and everyone kind of, you know, just pauses for a second, you know, because something's going, you know, just just the most infinitesimal pause. And you see, um, Amelia, that he has a bracer on his arm that looks very much the one that you would see not a few minutes before. Okay. And um, I would say that because this is all three of you have some sort of sorcery, um, you would you would note this too when he raises his hand and his coat sleeve kind of goes back, and you know he kind of raises his hand to get the captain's attention, and you would all see this bracer as well. Amelia is the only one who had seen it before. Um, but the other three of you have not, but it is striking because it is most definitely calling to uh, some kind of sorcery or, or magic type of, you know, you kind of, it, it grabs your attention in, in, a, in a sorcery type of way. Um, because all of the sorcery on Thea is kind of due to like the land itself and the things that are made from it. So they're almost all interconnected in a way. Um, so you can kind of feel that, th that this bracer is something special, which if you think about it for a second, makes sense. Cause you know, you have this storm and he got here like super fast for those of you who were on deck when it happened. So, you know, it might make sense. He might have some, some type of magic, but. Did they bring up well, Charles? Yep. Charles they has did? come up okay. and he's protesting like okay. crazy uh, hey. about this. 
I am going to glance at my Davis. Oh, he's sitting on, like, the railing of the ship, just okay. looking around. I, I just wanted to make sure that they didn't clock, like, that thing and go, ooh. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you, you can't tell. You can't tell. No. But let's go ahead and see um, what everybody would like to do or continuing to do. Uh, Gianni, you've kind of been been first to let us know what you're going to do. So go ahead. I was curious, did the, uh, did, when I was over on the other ship, did I ever manage to drop the anchor? Um, you did, because that was what you spent your race for to get over there. I'm pretty sure, I think. Okay, so but it seems to not be having any, any effect. Well, the ship isn't really, like, moving. Any, I mean, you guys are kind of locked in now uh, with, the, with the Utrecht and that. So, I mean... <sighs> I'll call out to the captain and say, Captain, I did drop their anchor. Captain Wheel looks over at you. Hmm. He nods. Um, are you going to take any particular action, Gianni? Having mm. seen and heard what you've seen, seeing the people come up on deck, or... or... Uh, honestly... I am probably just leading all the uh, enemy sailors on a merry chase uh, if they try and come after me because I have absolutely no weaponry and no intention of fighting. Okay. All right, cool. So you're going to be kind of doing a dance, really, just, you know, ha-ha, try to catch me, <laughs> this sort of thing. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, Andreas? Um, Andreas is going to see the... I'm assuming that Nanette does not look like a hostage right now, while the other, while Charles, Pip, and Squeak do look like hostages. Right. You don't. You don't know what's what's happening with that. Um. Well, at this point, uh, that's something that Andreas just cannot stand. So, um, he is going to stop his uh, his current making his way through everyone else, and just basically go right at them. Um. And basically try to take out the three people that are uh, have hostages as quickly as possible. Um, okay. So you're uh, going to try to rescue Nanette. Uh, no. Uh, actually, since Nanette doesn't look like a hostage right now, he is specifically avoiding doing anything to the person okay. who's with Nanette. So you're going after, like, Charles and Pippin Squeak. Yes. And, like, the other couple. Okay. Cool. Got that. I mean, uh, plus, who, who wants to take a swipe at? I mean, he's just so handsome. Um, <laughs> Tia said <is> that. <laughs> uh, Amelia, what's going to be uh, with these developments? Are you are you changing your tactic? Are you are are people still boarding, or has it like is there still a fracas afoot, or is? Have things kind of stopped since this guy has come up and, and called out the captain? Yeah, um, you, you know, it's it's kind of, uh, it's lessened. Like, people are still, but they're kind of like, wait a minute. You know, the, the crew of the Utrecht seems like maybe we don't have the upper hand, <laughs> you okay. know? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of, you know, they're kind of like trying to, but they're kind of like looking and they're kind of looking at the captain for, for like, you know, what do we, what do we do? You know, kind of thing. Um, I am going to try. Um, if I happen to see that Andreas is moving towards those that the hostage takers, the the pirates that have the little ones and and the other crew members and things. Mm -hmm. I am going to try my damnedest to shoot that bracer. You're going to shoot the bracer. I'm going to try to shoot the bracer and see what happens. Wow. If it okay, just cool. distracts him enough or if it does something. Because I do suspect that it is magical because I've seen its mate. Yes. But um, my, my, uh, my familiarity with... Amelia's familiarity with magic is not very good, but... Um, at best, maybe she hopes that there will be some kind of burst of light or some kind of thing that might knock him down as, as it were, or 
maybe it'll just fall off. I, I don't know. So, All right. Excellent. I, okay. I am and, going to ask the table if I can use the bonus D10 for that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Great. Uh, let me see what Nanette's going to do, and then we'll come around and get everybody's rules for, for what their action is going to be. I think as soon as we're on deck, um, Nanette's going to look around, and if she sees Amelia, she's just going to try to run at her and uh, yell, Madame Amelia, please help! This handsome stranger is trying to manhandle me! <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So let's start with uh, Gianni. You're going to be uh, trying to avoid uh, the pirates who are on there. So, um, Keystone Cop kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do, um, so first of all, let's do, um, finesse and Athletics or sailing? I'll let you choose. If you want the extra die, since you haven't done sailing and you are on a ship, you can use that skill, or you could go ahead and do athletics and not get your bonus die. Uh, I'll go athletics with finesse. Okay. Just All right, and I, I will say that because advantage. you you are everyone this round with their descriptions of everything is really good. So you all get a bonus die for your uh, interacting with the environment. For your for your rules this round, however, I'm going to use one of my danger points. Your raises will now are up by five, so you will need fifteens for your raises at this point. Ooh. I got more where that came from. So um, let's go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so you'll all get your your uh, bonus die for interacting with the environment and really going at it. However, you will need 15s for your raises. So Gianni, um, your finesse and athletics, plus your bonus die for your role playing. Any other advantages you want to use, you may do so. Um, uh, and so what you usually happen, since we're kind of in an action sequence now, we kind of built up to it, and now we're just going to be in a straight action uh, sequence. What I'm going to do is just give everybody their roles and what they need to do. We'll all roll. See how many raises everybody has, and the one who has the most will be able to uh, de de declare their stuff first. So, um, in this in this instance, Gianni, you will need a raise to um, not get caught. One, um, you know, stay stay upright, not get caught. Uh, two, you will need another one to not take any wounds for from any of the the pirates chasing you as well so we'll we'll go with that for right now um while you're running around uh andreas um you're gonna head and you're just gonna kind of barrel through and and try um, to i'm oh, going no, to... Yeah, you were gonna go after the people who were yeah i'm okay. going i'm trying to save the three hostages um i am going to burn a hero point so i can build my risk pool with both my wits and my finesse with my weaponry uh per my sword style Okay, so are you going to go after the one holding the the kids first, or are they the closely two? grouped? Uh, the kids, the two kids are together, and um, the other two crew. You have Charles, who's loudly protesting, um, who's being kind of manhandled by one pirate. You have Pip and Squeak, who are sort of like huddled together with another pirate. And then you have two more crew members who are with uh, two other pirates. And then of course you have the handsome. Very fancy looking fellow. Um, I'm going to start with Pip and Squeak. Um, if I have enough, I'd like to swing around um, and uh, go after the one with Charles. And um, worst comes to worst, after the three of them, I'll uh, I'll spin around and basically face down uh, the, the 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 nice gentleman who apparently is doing uh, who apparently is a uh, not a nice man. Was not a nice man, though he looks nice. <laughs> All right, looks so you only need deceiving. a <laughs> so you will need a race uh, to go ahead and and get over there, um, and and attack. You will need a race to actually uh, do some wounding over there, and I'll say another race to actually go ahead and and get the other three to release. So you're looking at three raises there. So that's 
Yeah, three races of 15. So remember, it's 15 at this point. Um, Amelia, you're shooting your bracer, uh, the bracer, uh, right. since it has conveniently revealed itself to you as he was shouting to the captain. Um, I, so yeah, I... um, finesse and aim there, plus any other advantages or anything you have, plus your extra die for the interacting with the environment. Yeah, so I think I'm rolling 11 die for this because I roll okay. six nice. for the base for the base okay. roll. Then uh, you gave us a bonus. The cast said I could use the other bonus. And then uh, I have three things that apply to this, three advantages right. that apply to this. So give me so one, one second. Yeah, huh? this is gonna. This is not going yes. to be easy for you. You will need one raise to go ahead and actually hit your target, of course. You will need another raise not to get hit yourself. And you will need two raises to mitigate, um, how do I put this? Uh, mitigate effects from hitting this thing. In other okay. words, hitting it in an appropriate place. So that's sure. four total raises. So that's like 60, isn't it, with what we're, what's going on currently? Right. Yeah, it's 15. Your raises are up by 15. Let me, let me see what I can do. Give me a second. So while and, he's doing math. <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah. uh yeah, time. Keep yeah, rolling, Nanette, keep rolling. I'll be there in a second. Yeah, uh Nanette, um go ahead and you're gonna be doing um you're running, you know, you're breaking free and trying to run towards Amelia. So I guess finesse and athletics. I'm great at that. So you will need one, of course, to achieve your goal and break free and start running. You will need a second one to go ahead and actually not fall. Um, I will like to say that she is not being held. She was compliant up until then. So, but yeah. she has no sea legs and 100% can eat floor. Yes. So you will need two raises for that. I will give you a, if you spend a third raise, I will give you an opportunity that you can grab one of the pirate swords on your way by as you are running. So two raises to make sure you break free and get away. And one, you can grab an opportunity to actually uh, grab a, a better weapon, should you so choose. Yes, John? Uh, can we spend hero points for other characters? I believe that's one of the uh, things. Yes. And it gives yeah. them an extra, uh, like, 3D tents, yep. right? Yeah, three yes. extra dice. You can. Uh, just because you don't have the skill and to help out a la... Uh, I'll go ahead and spend one of my hero points so that you have a chance. Sweet. If that's, that's all right with oh, the GM. Oh boy. Yeah, that's fine. By the way, that's fine. Okay, so everybody uh, has their roles and their risks and opportunities. Um, roll up and let me know how many races you got. <laughs> Danny, you also got a danger point from chat. Ooh. Thanks, chat. So cool. Yeah. I'll take they start that. with more than us. All right, so make your rolls, everybody. Tally up your raises. See what you got. Remember, it's 15. And remember, any extra die or advantages that you are using or hero points you are spending. I'm so glad I used my uh, sword school. I needed those 10 dice. Oh, uh, Johnny, you just got a... Point. Yep. What's up? Um, oh. Gianni got a hero point to get it back. Um, <laughs> nice. Thank you so much. I got three successes so i didn't get the mitigation success or raise um but i did uh, and you have two you can buy uh gianni um, you got a second hero point so you got three uh, raises i did all right yeah. okay all right um who else has their raises figured out three raises i three. just com i was just able to complete my actions Sweet. Through here uh, as well. Okay, so you get that and your opportunity, if you so choose. And Gianni. Uh, I only got two successes, but that's all. I only got two races, but that's all I needed so I can jump around like a fool and not get hurt. Ah, okay, great. Okay. So, so okay. So you got three, Gianni? If I remember, okay, so... All right, so everybody pretty much got three, three raises. So um, 
I'm going to go ahead, since everybody kind of got the same amount, usually start with the person who has the most raises first in an action scene. Um, I'm going to spend a hero point to give my uh, villain two more dice. A mm. day. Oh, okay. All right. That's it's not good. good. That's yeah, not I don't like. Good. I don't like the sound of that. All that's right. either. That's I either Danny that really well. Was bad die. <laughs> One, two, three, two, 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 two. Danny oh. counted higher than two, so I'm already yeah, in Yeah. Okay. Plan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the biggest thing that happens is, you know, Nanette runs, and well, we'll, we'll kind of go from little to big. That's how I'm going to run this here. So Nanette. You run, Amelia, this handsome man is trying to, you know, and you run across the deck. You manage to keep your feet. Um, are you going to use your opportunity to to grab the sword on your way by? Can I instead give my opportunity uh, to somebody else? Uh, the opportunity is yours. So okay. So your position. So, mm. um, I mean, you could grab it and toss it to somebody else. That would be an option. Just say it. Well, I was I was thinking uh like maybe knocking one of the guys holding the kids over for Andreas to have uh, an opportunity there. Sure. Actually let's let's go with that. Let's go with that. Opportunity. So you knock one of the guys over as you run. You know, you're just like burst away and you knock the guy over and you're running across the deck towards Amelia at this point. Um Gianni, you're just dancing about and you got all your raises right so you're not getting wounded or anything so you're just leaping you can describe what does that look like what is Gianni doing to keep these pirates uh, chasing uh him and on his toes i am running uh probably between barrels jumping uh between ropes in the mast uh sliding between a banister uh like a space in between with them all chasing me uh at some point i probably start acting like uh i'm chasing somebody uh and you know uh yeah I, i'm putting on a bit of a performance at the same time i'm just like oh let's get them guys you know and i have everybody kind of looking around wondering what's going on <laughs> well you're really annoying the pirate so at one point one of the pirates is like the scum come and fight us like a man <laughs> wouldn't kiss your mother with that mouth but uh she was Hidachi scum too <laughs> <laughs> All right, and and Andreas, you're just uh, uh, barreling. Uh, you're trying. You manage um, to kind of run forward, and uh, you had you got all three of your your raises, right? Okay, so, so go ahead. And uh, do I get all three? Uh, do I yeah. do I free all three prisoners with the opportunity? You can free one of the other ones with the opportunity. So you basically got at the guy holding Pip and Squeak, got Pip and Squeak ready, and you could get one of the other ones. Free. I'll get Charles since that was my third goal. So okay. uh, what Andreas does is he runs forward. Um, basically, uh, as uh, as Nanette knocks the person over, he basically leaps over that person, shoves his angosh into the chest of the one carry uh, with the for the zig, uh, pulls it out continuing on the run with his blade slashes upwards um to like slash through the hand uh or slash through the arm of the one who is holding um the one who's holding charles and then as he stands there and probably all of them are like super injured and like going what in the world just happens he just flicks the blood off of the blades and goes <sighs> uh, and uh and and quietly goes for you He has okay. deals to he has he has debts to pay, as nice. since he did it since he had to uh, burn something earlier. <laughs> the the your your Davis is is you know smiling and he's kind of he's kind of walking around. You ever see that scene? I think it was in Master and Commander where the guy's just walking down the stairs and stuff is blowing up like yeah, next in the third movie. pirates movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, third pirates movie. That's it. It was Nori and he's walking down. That's kind of what your Davis is. You just walking around all this stuff is happening gianni's running around amelia's running you know people are fighting you know amelia's shooting stuff you know and, and your davis is just 
walking around, like looking and just kind of enjoying the whole. They the are whole a kid in the candy you, store right now. And then when you, yeah. And then when you offer it to him, he kind of, you know, just reaches out and, you know, and just kind of like, almost like he's bringing it to him and to them and, and just kind of, you know, just, just enjoying that fact. Um, you know, you're kind of seeing a separate little scene play out there. <laughs> As for Amelia, um, you got three out of your four. Um, you missed one of the ones to prevent um, unintended consequences of hitting this yes. magical item. Yes. What happens is Amelia takes absolute aim and, and shoots this bracer. And what happens is, is lightning from one of the stones that you just hit on the bracer, fires out this huge arc of lightning. Everybody on, on you know, the pirates and everybody is blinded. I mean, the lightning is like right there. And it hits the mast of the Utrecht, which is now on fire. So, I am now yeah. going to um, use uh, some of these raises that I have, have done since it's kind of like at the end and I'm kind of doing my, um, with all of this. And so we're just gonna use um, a couple of these to go ahead and get, um, an opportunity to get three of the pirates, three, um, some more pirates on the ship. So I'm going to use an opportunity to set up some more planks, use um, two of the races to set up some more planks and do that. Um, and we're also going to have some of the um, uh, more pirates come up from, from below um, and all of that. So Pirates are, are
Welcome aboard once again, everybody, and we are back. We are back. So, yes. All right. So, um, the captain has called for Gunner to do what he asked him to do and get rid of the thing. And Gunner has turned upon the captain and said, I'm sorry, captain, but I can't let you destroy it. And he pulls a sword. And so, now, we will go ahead and we will um, start with uh, G Gianni. What does Gianni like to do? We will kind of go around and get everybody's actions, and we will go from there. Well, the ship is on fire. 
The mast is on fire. Yes. <laughs> like not even not even the sails. The mast itself is on fire. Yeah, I mean it was a lightning strike that came off of that bracer. So we're all probably got ringing in the ears too, huh? Yeah, and and you're kind of you know like blinking from all from all of that as well. And then the captain was kind of like when he said that, you know, kind of was like, "Got her," you know. It's not like he's basically, um, you know, Amelia, you've been with the captain enough. But he's he's a very practical man, and he he. he you know, is trying, is probably going to try to make the most uh, practical decisions. And he doesn't give up very easily from what you understand in the few months that you've, that you've been there. So. Uh, and he did use, I did use my raises as the villain to bring more pirates up from below and onto the ship. I'm, my character at this point, he's just like, uh, he's looking for an opening, uh, something, something that could turn the tide, anything that could turn the tide, because this mm -hmm. almost to him feels like a hopeless cause. Okay. All right. Okay. So he's just going to be like looking for any kind of, you know, opening opportunity to, to do something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Andreas, what's Andreas going to be doing? Andreas, uh, all right. So, all potential hostages are freed. Well, the ones that he cares about, the the kids, Charles, Nanette got away on her own. Uh, uh, Andreas is going to pause as well. Um. But I'm going to spend a hero point to activate my uh, virtue. Okay. Because Andreas is wondering if there's something else going on. And now for the rest of the scene, I know when anybody is lying. All right. Excellent. Okay. All right. So you're going to do that. Are you going to take any other action or are you still taking? Um... I think Andreas is going to square up with the uh with uh the, the the lovely chris evans and uh basically uh take any actions to dissuade him from doing anything else okay. so he's more of like if he tries to step forward he'll basically just bring his blade up in front and go um okay uh, so this you're is not what's going to... going to plant yourself as like an obstacle yes essentially. okay mm -hmm. And Gianni's looking for an opening of some kind. Okay. Um, Amelia, this has just gone down. Now, you've been friends with Gunner for, you know, as long as you've been on the ship. Yeah. Uh, this is a betrayal, uh, a deep cut. Uh, I'm still blinking, and I, I do question whether or not I heard correctly through the ringing in my ears, but when I see, when I blink away the stars and I see Gunner has pulled a, a sword and is squaring off with the captain or perhaps moving toward him, I don't remember exactly what movements he was making. Uh, I uh, am going to, I'm probably gonna either, I'm probably gonna tackle him or something i'm probably gonna get brawly because mm -hmm. that's you can shoot anybody a, sh mm -hmm. uh, a gun is far too impersonal for someone who's betrayed you like that so i'm gonna i'm gonna punch the motherfucker okay all right cool all right um and Nanette, you're you're running towards him in, and lightning came down and hit the mast and and all of this stuff and and what is and then you see you see amelia starting you know probably starting to go after somebody else or move away um um panicking and not really knowing what's going on what's happening it why there's lightning everywhere um she's probably just gonna follow amelia for now he's like you must protect me <laughs> Is it everywhere? Someone got her and that's just like, what are we doing? And like throws herself on him too. <laughs> you must hey, protect 
correct me. That'll help. That'll help. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> All right. Love it. Okay. Um. So let's 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 get some rolls here. Let's get some rolls going here. A uh, Gianni. So you're going to be looking for an opportunity. You're looking for um anything to use now. Is he looking for just anything? Is he looking for a way to escape? Is he looking a way to get on the other ship? Is he looking for a way to take down an enemy? Does he have anything specific in mind? Or is he just kind of grasping at, you know, whatever happens? To, to I come back? think that overall, he would uh, hope that maybe there would be hope if we could get the fire out on the mast. So if he saw some way to do that, that would be something. Okay, so he's going to try to save the ship. That's going to be, he's going to look at our, looking for some way to try yeah. to stop the fire. Okay, cool. All right, cool. So go ahead and do um, wits and notice. And, and you know, as he's looking around, that'll be your roll. If it's the first time you've done it, uh, you get your extra die as well. Um, Andreas, you are blocking... Uh, the the gentleman um so you're just kind of making yourself like a wall maybe holding out your sword to how is he doing that i think he's trying to basically the man has seen what andreas has done on the uh, on the on the deck as already so kind of standing there and like basically almost intimidating for lack of a better term going for like this is not the right choice for you to make all right resolve and intimidate uh, that'll be I your role can I use panache? Sure. Sure. Just, just, are you going to say anything in particular? Do anything particularly intimidating? Uh, I mean, he did just flick blood off of his blades. True. All right. Cool. Panache. Panache and intimidate yeah. then. All right. All right. And Amelia, you are tackling. So uh, we're going to go brawn and brawl, perhaps? She's just straight up gonna punch Sounds him. Good. Yeah, she's straight up punching yeah. him, right? You said so. Yeah, brawn and, and brawl. You're just gonna <laughs> run on up to Gunner, whose who's attention is on the captain, and you're just gonna come in like that guy who punched the dude on TV, just like out of nowhere. Just... I, I would yeah. like to give Amelia my hero point. Okay. And she oh, will get you. four dice instead of three. Right. Oh, nice. Because I am a good friend. You're my only friend, really. <laughs> okay. awesome. I mean, once you've gone through someone's dirty laundry and underwear, you know, we're bonded for life. Yeah. We're practically <laughs> besties. We're going to get matching necklaces at the first port we get to. You're Absolutely. Sailor. It's matching tattoos. Come on, Nanette. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go that far. <laughs> this is this is new for her. Yeah. <laughs> baby, steps, baby steps. Baby steps. First of with the matching jewelry. Uh -huh. I mean, you've been in battle together at this point, so got it. Um, okay, so how's Nanette going to? She's she's with Amelia. She's gotten over there. She sees Amelia about to to clock this guy. How she how is she going to uh, either assist, help out? Uh... Um, probably with a distraction. I, uh, Nanette's not particularly uh, physically capable, but uh, she can scream very loud. Perfect. Okay. Great. Um, awesome. Cool. So, um, I'm going to say that for you, um, that'll also be a, a, it's not quite intimidate, but we're going to, um, maybe, maybe perform. She's going to try to, try to be as distracting and, and as as possible you know to, to help amelia out so um probably uh finesse and perform may make a compelling case for wits and perform sure you can make a compelling case for that Al wits can or alternatively i also have warfare and although it's really like tactical sort of thing i don't know this might be brawling tactics mm-hmm <laughs> I'm trying to make a compelling argument, but perform will be fun. Okay. All right. So go ahead and we'll go ahead and do perform this time. Um, so go ahead and everybody uh, go ahead and make your rolls and use your extra die. Um, 
if if you have not rolled this before as well your your raises are now at 10 uh, again oh fantastic um i got four all right with two two left two die left over to buy all right perfect um hmm. two here two. three no leftovers okay and gianni uh, I have three races. Okay. All right. So everybody has their number of races. So you can spend one um, to do the action that you were going to do. Um, so, which is um, very simple. So Andreas, you weren't trying to, um, you weren't trying to like do it. You were just trying to like get in his way. You weren't trying he was to like attempting to dissuade him and uh, dissuade him and, and hopefully make him choose different options for uh, for his life path. Okay. So I'll go ahead and let you. And you got three raises. You said. Mm -hmm. Um, I will uh, go ahead and if you want to spend one of those for an opportunity. I will give you an opportunity to notice um, that this gentleman not only is from Montaigne, but you see he is a sorcerer as well. Um, while you're looking at him, you see his hands are bloody. Um, you know, you might be familiar enough with Forte magic to know what, does he know what it is? Andreas does not know what Forte magic so what is. What you see is this man has bloody hands. And he looks very, uh, you know, very fancy. And he has uh, bloody hands. And, w um, yeah, so, so that's going to be, you know, um, and then your, um, I'll say since you got another raise, your Davis will also, uh, you know, kind of, kind of appears next to him and seems to be sniffing him. And he's sniffing him like, like a beautiful flowers. Like you would smell something that's really, really nice. You know, perhaps wafting the fragrance towards yourself. And, and you see him like next to this guy kind of doing that. And he says, uh, uh, this one can rip holes in reality. Oh. Oh, and uh, and I just say this out loud. Oh no. Okay. Awesome. But you're successfully fully blocking him. He is definitely uh, has his attention on you, and he's kind of sizing you up to figure out how he's going to handle you for sure. <laughs> Great. Sorcerer duelist fight. This is going to be nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yanni. Okay. So you got three races. Yes. Right. So there is definitely, there is the, um, the, the, um, barrels that y'all use to like correct the rainwater and stuff like that. That could definitely be used. So you use your race to notice that you can use your other two raises to go ahead and grab one of those barrels or a couple of the barrels and start that process. Um, keep in mind, I always, I always feel like unless there's, uh, you know, really hefty circumstances that you can always shout at your fellows if you need to. I, I usually don't make people spend actions or anything like that unless it's like you're being magic shut or something, you know, like, um, so, um, so yeah, you could use that um, and use some of those rain barrels as well. Uh, so you can use that. I'll say you, you can use your, you notice the rain barrels. You can use the rain barrels. You also notice that there are um, lawn boats over the side that have not uh, been damaged yet. Um, you know, there's the, you know, the little boats you would drop over the side to like go to shore and stuff like that. You also see those. Uh, I'm going to, uh, call out to somebody, uh, and I'm gonna get them to tie off a barrel onto some rope, and, uh, let's see if we can hoist it up and put out the fire on the main mast. Okay, cool. All right. Amelia, you got, okay, so you, 
get over there and use your run raise to punch him out. Nice. Right? I mean, you just Good. knock his. So you can do this a few ways. Since oh, you've nice. got four raises, you can punch him and use your other three raises to deal wounds to him. Fantastic. Or you could use, you know, you could also do a combination of doing wounds to him and like tying him up or um, if you if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I would like to punch him twice. The old <laughs> one, too. Um, and then I would, uh, yeah, I would like to... Uh, or <clears throat> I either want him to stay down or, uh, yeah, or tie him, tie him down. Okay. Set something heavy on him. <laughs> something. Right. So you use your one raise to go over and clock him. You use two of them to wound him and the last one to like, you know, yeah. you know immobilize him. Good. Okay. I might, I might spat in his face as well. Okay. Awesome. I am ticked. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a situation to be ticked about. <laughs> All right. And Nanette, you had three? Just two. Just two. All right. So use your one to be a distraction, which allowed Amelia to get a really, 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 really good, good hit in. Even Captain Wheel kind of turns and looks when you let out this, this screech. Um, you know, this scream and stuff. Cause you said that's what you were doing, right? That's how she's distracting. She's going to put out a scream. Um, yep. and you can use your one opportunity. Um, you have a couple opportunities. One, you can help Amelia, uh, tie, tie, uh, him up. Or you could use this opportunity while everybody is, uh, you know, distracted um, to to get rid of the thing that you have, since everybody is doing something else, I will let you. I will. I will. I will give you a choice. If we're close to the edge of the ship, then I think option number two is probably the best way to go. At least in her mind, like everybody's distracted, everybody's busy. Um, handsome man is occupied. Like if we're further away from the pirate crew, like I guess if. If we're on the opposite side of the pirate crew, that's where she'd want to dump it. Uh-huh. Okay. Because clearly right. they've been swimming in that water too, and she doesn't want any pirates to potentially get it. Uh-huh. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So you're going to go over and you're going to uh, dump this thing over the side, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. So that little box uh, with with the bracer, uh, you, you dump it over the side and you watch it plop into the water, the stormy, uh, stormy water. Um, okay. So at this point, y'all have done that. And now we're going to, um, Captain Wheel says, Goner, you mutinous dog. I knew that somebody was giving information. It was you. Where is it? And Gunner looks at you, Ace. And he says, Ace has it. It's in Ace's things. It's in her trunk. But you're not going to get it. I'll get it, Captain. <clears throat> okay. I'd like to. I'd like to put uh, the the toe of my boot in Gunner's heel, though. Okay. Awesome. He keeps. He keep. He just keeps talking, and I don't want him to. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, so so you kind of like step on him, and you're gonna go get it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick him and then I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> okay. If I need to roll, I will. <laughs> but... Okay. Uh, no, I mean you you've subdued him, so you so you can kick him, and um, you go and he shouts after you, 
And he says, as soon as you bring it up here, it'll be no longer yours. Hmm. And he's kind of, he looks at you and, and then he kind of says that to the, to the captain. And the captain wheel says, I never wanted it to be mine. Those things are not for our possession. And then he kicks him too. The one that I shot, <laughs> the one that I, sh the bracer that I shot, is it still on the guy's arm? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it's still okay. on Silent Death's arm. Um, you've knocked out one of the stones, but it's still on there. Okay. Okay, cool. Then, yeah, All I right. will, uh, I will go below decks. All right. Awesome. So at this point, um, you know, there are... A lot of pirates <laughs> who have come up from below. Um, what, um, I, Amelia, when you go down there um, to, you know, get, retrieve the box, um, it, you notice that a lot of the, the portholes, um, you know, uh, have been, have been opened. Um, what you suspect happened is while stuff was going on up above, he was sending, like, frogmen, submariners, up the side of the ship to try to come up from below, which is, sure. you know, a pretty common tactic um, to try to yeah. oust everybody to get them in one place so he could take them over the ship. But now now you're pretty sure that's where the other pirates were coming from. Um, and, and the captain wants it thrown overboard, right? Yes. Okay, so I mean, like... I'm not going to bring it back up. I'm going to just throw it out the window. <laughs> right. If well, I can find go, it. I mean. Yeah, you go to where if you think it is. And yeah. it's not there. Nice. It's gone. Son of a bitch. Well. I got a free opportunity right. from the chat. So. Um, I'll leave you there for a second while she ponders what she's going to do about that. And we're going to go to Andreas, who's staring down this, this gentleman, and the gentleman says, he's like, you do not look like you're a part of this crew. We have no beef with you. There's no need to throw your life away. As you can see, you are outnumbered. I may not be part of this crew, but you have threatened those that have that have promised to take me and several others to someplace safely. What what else am I to do but assist them in their assist them in repelling it, all of you? Well, you can't be blamed, but they do have something that belongs to us. Is he lying? He's not lying. At least as far as you know, he's not lying. I was going to say, we're still in the same scene, so I'm like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, he, he's not absolutely lying. absolutely believes so what the, he's saying. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. absolutely believes what he's saying to you. But you're pirates, so technically all that you have is not yours. Is it really th thievery if you're stealing from those who steal from others? Things are a little more complicated than that. You needn't worry your pretty little head about it. <laughs> Thank you. Just step aside and let us do and get what we came for. Unfortunately, that is something I cannot do. He kind of waves, and one of the, the pirates uh, kind of tosses the crew member that he was holding uh, to you, uh, that he was holding to the other pirate. And he kind of steps forward, and he, he's getting in position. He's going to try to take you out and duel you. Uh, 
All right, so we will leave that there. Okay, Gianni. All right, so this has all happened, and you are trying putting out the flames um, of of the of the thing, and then they've kind of gone down. But um, you don't think that that you were that you were it was. It, you're hoping you got there in time, but you're not quite sure. Um, but you do see kind of everything else that that's going on as well while you're trying to take care of that, and a couple. Um, you know, a couple are trying to fend off some of the some of the pirates while you know try, someone else is trying to help you uh, put out put out the mast. Um, is he going to uh, do anything else? Are you going to continue with what you're doing? I think uh, Gianni is going to uh, be like, "What the hell? We're not getting out of this one very easy." Maybe I should go visit their powder room. And I'm going to jump back across to the other boat, uh, taking, you know, grabbing a rope. And ah, just, uh, okay. I'm going to like, I'm going to, what else can I do? I can't fight these people. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're going to swing back over to, yep. to the whisper. Okay. And I'm just like, they're probably getting very tired of seeing me. But I'll, I'll probably just to uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll give a hero point. Uh, I've got so many extras. I'll go ahead and spend a hero point for uh, for Andreas. And seeing this uh, seeing this duel about to start, I will add a little something to his uh, pool, and I'll be like, I'll look over at the person dueling him. And he's like, Sir, I think you are the kind of person whose mother thinks of him often when she's emptying her chamber pot over the balcony. And then I swing over. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, Nanette, so you have now dumped this thing overboard. Um, and you see that there's lots of pirates and there's lots of things going on. Uh, what is Nanette going to do now? Um, have another mental breakdown, but also uh, probably try to stay out of the way wherever possible. She is not this. Right. Um, yeah, she's she's trying to stay out of the way, trying to make herself small, hide behind things, not draw any further attention to herself than okay. the screaming. All right. Okay, so, um... Ace, what are you going to, uh, she's not there. It's not where you put it. Remembering what the box looks like, is there anything else in the, uh, in the, uh, like, maybe below decks? Can I think of anything else? I did get a free opportunity, by the way, uh, from yeah. chat. Uh, is there anything else that I could bring up that may look similar in shape? And perhaps be a box that closes. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. There's some. There's there's enough around here in the quarters. Um, you also know that. I mean, it's probably not surprising, but your stuff has been ruffled through. Um, sure. Not by you. Sure. <laughs> it's so, clear you that know. someone has stolen the box. From, yes. Uh, um, and I, I'm willing to spend a hero point if I need to 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 find something similar that I could possibly pass off. I don't think it's that hard. I don't think it's worth spending. Okay. I mean, there's plenty of stuff down here. I mean, you can find a, a similar sized box. A similar shaped you know, case. You can okay. wrap it up in fabric if you wanted to, just to hide the material, just in case, you know. Sure, If, if sure. you wanted to. So, you okay. can make a, a, a decoy. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I'm going to do that very, very quickly. That, that would be... And then I will begin to return above decks. If I'd found the actual box, I would have tossed it out a porthole. If, since I didn't find the actual box, I'll play along and hope that they're focused enough on looking for the box that they're looking, you know, they're focused enough on, on seeing what they want to see that they're not going to perhaps notice that maybe the box isn't the right box. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so you're going to do that. Um, Andreas. Okay, so you have this pirate facing you. Mm-hmm. And he's going to go ahead and uh, duel you. So 
Um, what we'll do is we'll do kind of like a dual, um, uh, you know, we'll do basically like raises. Um, you can use your dueling maneuvers. Okay, um, so standard, if... uh, standard maneuver going through our raises to go back and forth. Right, right. Hmm. Yeah, so um, go ahead and let me know. It's standard raises, so just let me know how many you get. Uh, nine dice, uh, so finesse plus weaponry plus hero point dice. <laughs> All right, so how many raises did you get? One sec. That's what I want to see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So um, Andreas is going to go first. So what would, what would you like to do? Uh, Andreas is going to um, faint. So he's going to do a... Uh, I'm going to deal one wound to him immediately, but seem like my guard is open. Okay. All right, so you dealt a wound. Um, all right, so you're going to use uh, one raise to do that. Yep, one raise to do that. All right, and he's going to use a raise to... Uh, re hmm, let's see. He, I'm going to spend a danger point. Oh. So, um, so he can go twice on there. Um, so he is going to repost. Mm -hmm. He's going to prevent a number of wounds and deal a number of wounds to your wings and weaponry, um, which happens to only be two. So he was able to prevent, uh, the wounds you gave him. That'll okay. be one raise. Um, and he will take his second um, to slash and deal number of wounds equal to his rank, which is two. All right. So he's doing four to me right now. That's important uh, no, he's, because he's doing two, two from the repost and then two from the slash. Oh, yes. Yes. Because okay. repost also does damage. Right. Exactly. OK. Yeah, you're right. Um. Spending my next raise since it's been two, I spend my next raise to uh to also repost to preventing three of those okay. and doing three to him. All right. So I will take one. All right. So he has uh do you have I any am, more raises left? I have burned two raises so far. So I have three raises left. All right. He is actually out of his raises. He kind of came out of the box just so you can use those Three. Oh wow. Um so I am going to Oh by the way, I did I uh, do one more because because of the fact that I uh feigned before, I did an extra damage. So I actually did four wounds on that. Um okay. after that I am going to I am going to burn since he seems to be completely open, uh Andreas is going to um glance at the source uh a glance at the fine gentleman who decided to bring this guy over to him and lunge uh burning all three of my raises to do three damage plus three plus my weaponry to do a total of <laughs> um to do a total of seven wounds to him to to the handsome gentleman no, to, to to the uh, to the pirate who's dueling him. Basically, me going. If you're not going to phase me, I'd, let me take care of this oh, real quick. So you're just looking at the handsome guy while you're doing it, essentially, like basically flirting. Like I, yeah. Oh yeah. Like There's it, 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 it's it's guy. definitely a flirt slash intimidate. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, you take this guy out. You you can do a coup de gras on him if you want. At that point, with seven wounds. And, and using your actions, I'll say you can go ahead and, like, fully take this guy out if you want to send a message or spare him. It's up to you. Um, 
I will take him out. All right. Um, and again, uh, with a little flourish, even though I, did, I haven't done anything with uh, for uh, for my Dave uh, for my Davis, uh, just basically turning around, flicking out, and going, "Is that the best you have to offer?" I did give you a <laughs> chance to rethink your life decisions. Like, they'll be like, "He'll remember that." <laughs> like, the, like, like the RPG, like he'll remember that. <laughs> He look. He kind of raises an eyebrow at you, and he said, "Interesting demonstration." What is your name? Uh, with a flourish and a bow, um, Andreas Carras, member of the Duelist Guild. Olivier Dubois. Pleasure. Indeed. All right. And, and he, you know, the other pirates are kind of coming forward and he's just going to kind of like, you know, like, you know, and, he, and he's just kind of, we're going to kind of leave that there with him looking we'll wait and see how you, how you uh, deal with that. But we're going to go to Gianni uh, swinging over um, and go ahead. Um, so yeah, you're, um, Finesse and athletics, what you were swinging over before, F finesse and athletics. And away we go. Yeah. Uh, you'll need a raise to get over there and another one to prevent being injured. And I'll give you an opportunity if you have more raises than that. All right. I do have uh, a total of three raises again. Okay. So you didn't get injured. You swung over there. Um what before i give you your opportunity what is gianni looking to do over here what's his what's his his goal is he is he trying to take out more pirates is he trying to sabotage is he trying sabotage to... <laughs> okay <clears throat> sweet uh, yeah uh i don't know if i you know it's like whether it's going to the helm and steering this ship away from the ship, you know, re wrenching it away, uh, and then trying to make my way back or something, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I will I will give you some choices. Um, and you can decide which would feel like Gianni. Um, you can start cutting off the grappling hook ropes. I'll give you an opportunity to do that. That way, that, that's what's holding the ships together. Um, so if you did that, they would pretty quickly start drifting apart um they wouldn't be able to to hold especially with this weather that has seemed to have gotten worse ever since uh the the bracer was um the ship the whisper had seemed really kind of almost unaffected by it but now that it's been shot um you know the ship both of the ships are having kind of a hard time and everything seems like a little more chaotic rather than the very like controlled heavy storm that had been there a little bit ago so he could do that uh kind of take out the grappling hooks he could try to take down some of the sails um or which would you know kind of stop the the ship from being able to like go anywhere um but they would still be attached um he could try to take out um you know the wheel you know and and so that it would not be uh easy to to, to maneuver or anything like that or you could you could um you know try 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 something else if none of those appeal to you if you come up with an idea well my other idea would be to go i mean captain's quarters on ship seem to always be in the same area and uh, there's always something terribly flammable in them okay so you're gonna set things on fire yeah i'm like yeah, hey you you set my boat on fire here you enjoy Okay. All right. So you so you managed to get on there um because most of the pirates are trying to like corral the Utrecht crew, which they seem to be doing a, a, a pretty good job of. Um while you, you know, kind of maneuver down. Um yeah, I'll, I'll I'll kind of sneak my way down there. All right. So we'll we'll come to that then. Um and everything. So and and Nanette, you know, you were you were hiding and the storm seems to be uh, uh, getting worse. 
um, you do see um, the the cabin boys sort of huddled a little bit away from you, uh, kind of trying to hide themselves um, as well. And they look very, very, uh, very scared. Um, well, I would like to activate my virtue and at least comfort them. All right. Excellent. They, uh, you know, do, you, you go over to them. He's going to be all right, little children. Uh, they they, they laugh of the way, <laughs> you know. Grab onto your, you know, your clothes and and you're kind of, um, you know, hidden there and and you know they seem to feel a little bit better. Our, so. our friends are very capable. I'm sure we'll get out of this just fine. And then the pirates will leave us alone. Don't mind the fire. <laughs> indeed, indeed. That's okay. just scenery. All right. That's just scenery, Andreas cutting someone down right behind you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, they can't see that. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> Covers little kid's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh Amelia, so you come back up up the stairs with your uh your package. Uh what are how how right. are how are you gonna play this? Um, well, uh, I'm going to bring up the, the box and, uh, I assume people are going to be looking at me. Yes. Um, I'm going to hold the box out. I have your bloody bracer, you bastards. And then I'm, I'd like to shoot from the hip at, uh, at, uh, the uh, Chris Evans guy, whatever his oh, name is. Oh, at, at the, the mage, yeah, Olivier. Okay. Yeah. All I, right. I couldn't remember You're his name. There. Okay. Excellent. All right. Olivier Dubois. So we have. Uh, they came up from. They came up from below decks, right? So I'm assuming that they're closer yeah. to me than just about yes. anybody else. Right. They're they're kind of were standing kind of right there when you came back up, and you do see the remnants of someone that Andreas has cut down. Uh, in the in the time you've you've been below, and he's kind of um, staring off, uh, you know, staring at the guy. But um, okay, well, so let's do this. Let's kind of quickly sum up. Nanette is comforting Pip and Squeak um, while all this is going on. Gianni is heading down uh, on the Whisper and all this chaos to try to uh, start a fire. Andreas has just cut one of these pirates down who who thought to face him and is now you know looking at um the olivier dubois um and then amelia has come up and she's about to um shoot from the hip uh to to shoot this guy so let's do it in the kind of the order we did before andreas um so you've just cut down this guy so this is just a bit before amelia comes back up so do you have any particular uh, reaction or what do you say? What do you do after this all goes down? And he's kind of like, kind of stopped them from like going after you again. And he's kind of looking at you a little differently, like a little more respect. Final chance. Leave this ship with your life or it will be mine. Hmm. And you think you can take everyone here on? Is that what I'm hearing? If that's what it takes. Confident. Huh. And at that point, Amelia will come up and uh, uh, she'll do Just that. Just ISO from behind. <laughs> Is it that? Then he gets shot. Um, I am totally like... down for this, just being creating an opportunity for Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Gianni, um, you go down there um, into the quarters and you you gather that um, Silent Death was probably pretty confident about his because you don't run into any. Um, you know, everyone is kind of up above, um, and you've managed to slip down, which kind of speaks to you of somebody who's pretty confident they're winning without any contingency. And you're able to get to, 
um, the the what you gather are the captain's quarters, and it is it is locked. It was locked. I spent a hero point and Pop got it and walk right in. All right. It was. All right. So you walk in and it is, uh, he has a lot of books and maps in here all over the place. It kind of reminds you of that guy that came on with Andreas. Just a lot of books and scrolls and things like that. And when you look at them, you kind of note that they don't seem like the things a pirate captain might be interested in. More esoteric, like mythology and um, about sorcery and um, different artifacts and, and things like that. But they are very flammable. They are. But they also look valuable. Because some of them look uh, pretty old. <laughs> and I, uh, I find a decanter of brandy. Oops, knock it over. Yes. Oh, I, I start to blot it up with a nearby paper, making sure it goes everywhere. <laughs> And uh, reach over to, uh, hopefully he has like uh, one of those old timey ship captain cigar lighters, you know, uh, that just is oil with a flint. Silent Death smokes a pipe, so it's easy enough to uh, find Not Too bad he had that candle lit. <laughs> that oil lamp in the corner. <laughs> such a waste, such a waste. Uh, and I, uh, I set uh, what I have started on fire. Yeah. Uh, I mean... and I will grab, uh, the oil lamp as I go, uh, and walk along the, uh, deck away from the captain's quarters. Not, not, not the, uh, not the top deck, uh, the lower deck. Okay. And, uh, do I see any cannons or anything nearby? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, there's cannons. Oh, uh, a cannon on the opposite side of the ship, not the side pointing at our ship. I uh, toss the uh, oil lamp over there. I just, I'm like, oh, I slipped. Let it fall and break on the ground. Oh no, there goes my lamp. <laughs> However, should I see now? <laughs> oh, fire. How beautiful. <laughs> and I, I, I stroll back up and I'll see about uh, arranging a ride to the other side. Okay. All right. So let me ask you this. When you were shoving things into your you know anything does he have a particular method or is he grabbing whatever he could grab Did he have does it look expensive this? all right okay okay all right and i'm probably losing them as i walk you know walk away they're probably just falling out of my shirt uh occasionally <laughs> so he tried to put literally as much as he could yeah like like on his person oh yeah okay all right all right excellent okay all right, cool. All right, so so that happens, and now we're gonna go to uh, Amelia. <laughs> so let's do your. Uh, you come up and you say, "I have your bloody bracer, you bastards!" <laughs> and <laughs> go ahead like and sh <laughs> shoot uh, this very fancy gentleman. Okay, since I'm shooting from the hip, is it not aim at that point? Is it be does it become something it else? Would it be? So you're gonna have to do weaponry. Okay. So uh, and um, still finesse, or do you want me to use something else there as well? A finesse still, yeah. Finesse and weaponry. And if that's the first time you've used it, uh, go ahead and take your extra die for that. It is indeed, and I am going to go ahead and still take my sea legs uh, bonus yep. die. And I will also say, since you're doing something really, really gutsy, go ahead and take another die for for drama. Awesome, and, and... thank you. Raises are still tens, right? Yes. So you'll need one uh, to hit your target. Um, and then you can uh, go from there. Well, I rolled two tens. And Whoa. then two sixes and fours and an eight and a two, so I got five. 
Nice. Okay. Wow. Nice. This is her. This is her Bollywick. One. Yeah. One extra. One extra. If you'd like to buy it. Um. Well. Um. What I'm going to do is. Um. So you shoot him. Uh. That took one. So you're gonna hit him. Um. So you can do the rest as wounds. Um, I will also give you the opportunity of hitting him and hitting one of the other pirates who has Charles in his clutches. Oh no, Charles is free, so one of the other crew members. Um, so you okay. could use your rays, just uh, all give him wound, the other three raises, or other four, to just give him wounds. Or you can use it to kind of um, hit another one of the pirates and try to release one of the, the other crew. Yeah, let's go ahead and go go for two. Two, two, uh, two people getting hurt. Okay. All right, cool. So, um, are you going to kind of split it? Like, do shoot, shoot? Or are you just going to, like, do it mostly at this guy and be like, eh, I'm going to shoot you too? Like, how, how are you going to split it? Mostly, mostly at Olivier. I just don't understand what his purpose is. Like, I, I don't, he's, he got onto my ship somehow and he's led a bunch of people up. To, and and taken taken crew hostage, which they've gotten away. But that still, he's still here, clearly working for the enemy. Uh, but yeah, and I, I'll just mostly on him. But but yeah, pop pop, release some crew people. All right, all right, yeah. So uh, Andreas, you say that. Um, what what you say before? You know, you say you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. I haven't be built, built my convince pool. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be like, you know, if I have to, you know, and then all of a sudden from the side, just pop up, pop, and, and, and the gentleman kind of looks down like he kind of can't, and then over his nice, like, blood kind of starts to spread. And, um, and, and, you know, and he kind of, like, looks down and he kind of puts his hand there. And then he kind of looks over and sees Ace. Now, are you are you looking at him or or how how are you, uh, uh, Ace? Me? Yeah, like he's gonna uh, look over at you. So are you staring at him? Are you staring away from him with your gun pointed at him? How's that working? Uh, I'm gonna be because I came out with the box. Um, I'm gonna be looking across the way at uh, with my keen eyes, my eagle eyes at uh, at silent but deadly over there and uh i'm gonna pop pop and then i'm gonna throw the the empty decoy into the ocean ah okay all right so he watches you do that and at this point and andreas obviously sees it gianni's trying to find a way back over at this point. But what Silent Death does is he sees this, sees you toss this thing over uh, uh, the side. And he start he signs and his translator says, and for that, you will all follow it to the bottom. And he says, and he starts, um, he is going to, uh, start to come across himself at this point. Um, yeah. He's going to start to come across himself at this point. Oh, that um, got your attention, didn't it? Yeah. All right, and Gianni, so you're going to try to, um, uh, get back across. How are you, um, going to try to get a rope? I, uh, I I'm just going the captain. To, I'm gonna be very nonchalant about it because obviously they're not watching behind them, and I'm just gonna be I'm I'm just gonna be like excuse me, but excuse me, and I'm uh, as I get across, I'll probably like nudge one of them and say, "Do you smell smoke from the ship?" All right, so you're gonna be kind of trying to bluff your way through. Hello. Yeah. All right, so um, yeah, uh, wits and and um, let's see, convince. I guess that's what that would be. 
or, um, eh, you know, perhaps panache. You're trying to do it with a little bit of flair and stuff too. If you want to use panache, if that's better for you, panache or rich, um, and, and convince you're trying to like get nobody to notice like, Hey, wasn't he over there? (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I'll go ahead and for the table, I'll spend a hero point since they gave me so many. Uh, just to give me an extra one on there. All right. Oh, boy. So you'll need a raise to, uh, you know, make your way across and you'll need at least another one to make sure like nobody realizes uh, who you are. All right. So I'm looking at four raises grand total. Wow, nice. Yeah. So nice. so I'll say you can you can easily uh uh make your way across there. Um, you know. But it's, you know, maybe not maybe not the uh, you know, the sharpest harpoon on the ship. <laughs> we'll say <laughs> at least some of these guys. Um All right. So yeah, and so with the other two um I will say the other two can get you your kind of like right near near the front where silent death is like crossing over so that's kind of where you've been able to position yourself without being noticed which is quite a feat so you can see him in front of you you know big dude uh all right in front of you um so i yeah okay we'll, we'll go with that yeah so be right in front of you and we'll come back to, to how you handle that because at this point all of this is going on right and then everyone starts to smell smoke not only is it coming from the Utrecht but it's coming from the other ship now and there is a large crack in the Utrecht as well um, there's just been a lot of damage going around and both ships like start to start to you know give a big heave because they're you know kind of attached to each other still um and so i'm gonna have everybody do uh, a balance uh you know a balance check for this because at this point you got the fire out on the mast but the big crack was the mast on the utrecht and now you can all see that the other ship is now on fire as well um, so go ahead and, um, I guess, uh, finesse and athletics to, to stay upright. You need at least one to stay upright, two not to take any wounds. Three, three. Excellent. Oh, oh no! And Andreas, how did you do? Three. All right. So everybody got three. You guys are fine. Um, just, you know, and all of that, um, you know, you just, you managed to stay, to stay up there. So that's good. Nanette, you're there with Pip and Squeak. And, you know, you're kind of coward there. And then one of these boxes, these crates that are... Um, uh, above you kind of falls and you know you almost get out, out of the way but not quite and you will take a wound from that she pushes the children out of the way oh because nice. they're heroes she's like oh no <laughs> and then like gets hurt herself um yeah so she's gonna have a nasty bruise uh from all of that um added to the collection yeah so yeah so at this point um it's apparent to probably everybody gianni andreas amelia nanette um i mean even though you haven't been on ships a lot um the mass just fell (laughs) that's bad and there's a lot of smoke coming from the other ship um so by all accounts for any of you this is not good for anybody um and captain wheel and silent death seem to realize this as well um silent death has stepped onto the utrecht and then kind of realizes you know then the the big crack and everything like that gianni's right behind him um and the big crack and the mass falls and then with that and then the smoke and he kind of turns and looks 
Um, so, um, at this point, Captain Wheel is going to shout, um, everybody fight to the longboats! <laughs> because at this point, um, Captain Wheel, the look on his face is, Amelia is, we're gonna lose the ship. That's, that's just what's gonna happen right now. Can I, can I clarify? So the crack is actually in the, the hull of the Utrecht or it's the, the mast cracked? The, the mass cracked, but it created so much damage that when it fell, because it's the, like the main mass that sure, had been sure. filed the lightning, that the ship probably won't... Won't make, make it. it. Yeah, and okay. you guys aren't like in a place where you can sit and like try to repair and stuff because you're being boarded by pirates. Sure, of course, of course. Uh, okay. Then, uh, did Olivier fall when I shot him? Um, he, he, yeah, well, he's, yeah, well, he kind of looked and then the mass and all of that stuff falls, but yeah, he kind of goes down to his knees a little bit. Okay. Yeah, he goes down to his knees after he got shot. I'm trying to determine if he's worth taking hostage in, in a, in a brief moment. Um, and I assume, I assume our, our extra boats are off the side, right? Yep. Well, off the yeah, side you have the boat there, would... and they're going to have to be untied and brought down. Sure, sure. Uh, and Silent Death is still on our ship? Or he, did he just back? stepped across. He had, like, he had just gotten there when all that stuff happened. Um, okay. And when Captain Wheel shouts, you know, to the lawn boats, um, I'll, I'll get to what Silent Death does in a second. I kind of want to get what everybody is, is doing. Sure, sure. He's, then... Well, I mean, let me just put it this way. He's going to be doing pretty much the same thing. I mean, because he's just seen what he was after go overboard. This ship is sinking. His ship is in trouble. He's got to go deal with that. At this point, both the captains, you know, you all have enough experience with it. It's kind of like everybody's going to die or everybody can kind of, you know. <laughs> sure. I, yeah. Uh... Not really a victory for anybody <laughs> at this sure. point. Uh, I'm going to, um, shout, uh, to the crew and to Nanette and our compatriots, <laughs> especially Nanette with the kids. Is, is she, is she okay? I mean, she, she, something fell on her, right? She took a wound. We don't know yeah, yet. But she'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be like, wound, so I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to stand since the boats are likely behind me yeah, since this is are. not the side that they're we're being boarded on and uh i i may even look at andreas and and say put him in a boat get in the boats and then yeah, i'm gonna shoot shoot uh silent death again okay all right so you're gonna yell at everybody to get in the boats and grab olivia and get in the boats and shoot silent death again okay all right, That's Andreas, what are you what are you gonna do before we do rolls? I'm gonna go around to everybody. Am I, am I saving Olivier now? <laughs> I mean, well, he seems you don't have valuable. To <laughs> you don't have to listen to him to me at all. You're not crew. <laughs> uh, What does Olivier look like that he's about to do? Is he about to also, like, ski-daddle and get away? He's doing something with his hands. Oh. Yeah. He He's kind of down on the, and he's, you know, kind of, uh, you know, trying to trying to make some kind of, of, of gesture. Can you porte with no hands? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like let's I'm experiment. That dark let's with his character. <laughs> uh, I will. Uh, I will. Um. I will look down at Olivia and go. I'm a man of my word. I said if you attempt, if you retreated, that you could live. And I will forgo the greater good of capturing him to take the personal victory of letting him escape. Yes, I'm activating my hubris. 
Oh boy. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Okay, yeah. So um, he I will instead help um everyone. Uh I will instead help um uh, uh Nanette and the children get to the uh, get to the longboats. Okay. All right, yeah. So he um what you see and you've never seen this before is he's going to um you know cut essentially a, a slice it looks like he's cutting a slice but it starts to bleed and scream and everything and he kind of tumbles into it with his eyes closed and then it kind of closes behind him and um yeah and so then you start helping everybody else so um so let's go to Gianni now. So Gianni, like mast, crack, falling. Captain Wheel gives the order, everybody to the longboats. Silent Death kind of looks at looks at the ma- you know looks at the mast, looks over at smoke coming from his ship, and he sees you this time because he's turned around and you are right behind him. So it is up to you how you how you play this off because he's seen you before. Where exactly is he standing? Um, he is on the Utrecht. He stepped on the deck across. So he's just, deck. just, just recently stepped onto the deck. Yeah. I'll look at him. I'll be like, well, "You heard the captain, abandon ship." And I reach out my hand and I'll pull him and let him fall into the water. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna try to yank him into the water. Yeah, uh, using uh, sorte, I'll just uh, go ahead and wrap my hands around his weave and yank him into the water. All right. Okay. All right. And Nanette, uh, you hear all that going on. Uh, what is Nanette going to do? Um, she has like an instantaneous reaction to the the porte being used, but yes. like she more like tenses up. Um, but then realizing that everything's on fire and horrible, she uh, was working with the kids to try and get to a lifeboat. Okay. She's like, "All right, what do we do?" <laughs> do do I need to untie something? <laughs> and the kids grab your hands and they kind of take you over to like where Andreas. She's is like, I'm you. useless. Kind of this, okay. Uh, so so let's make some rolls here since everybody's kind of declared what they're doing. Uh, we'll start with Andreas who uh has let uh Olivier go, and um, you're gonna be helping. So um, assisting. So I would say that's probably like uh either sailing or athletics i'm trying to yeah something like that with you like helping and like you know getting the ropes undone and stuff like that so you can use either um you can use your finesse okay i'll say you can either use finesse or how how would andreas go about helping i think that'll determine whether you're probably like, trying just to be extras or whether you're trying to brawn something and just uh he would probably be trying to, as the ship is like yawn at yawing now and uh, doing that, he would probably be trying to like help people up and over whether like not doing so much the sailing part where dropping things in because he has no idea how to do that. <laughs> but he would be helping to get people over. And if they tell him to like grab that, toss it in, grab that, toss it in, he'd be doing that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. That sounds like brawn to me. So brawn and either sailing or athletics, whichever. whichever I will go with athletics. Like. Okay, so you will need, um, so yeah, you'll, and you'll need one to kind of do what you're intending to do, and we'll say for raises, you know, it's just going to, like, uh, help, you're, you're getting more and more people on the ships, um, any of the crew that you can, um, that you can spare, um, or you can grab and get on there and stuff like that, so, okay. um, and as for, uh, Amelia, let's go ahead and take your shot. Okay. Um, you know, you'll get one to make the shot, and you can do um, use any extra raises above one to do wounds, or you can try to, like, get the person next to him if you like once. Okay, cool. Uh, just one second here. Let me do some quick math. All right, I got uh, four successes with that. Um, okay. 
So I want to hit, I assume, so Silent Death turned away. So I'm shooting him in the back. Yeah, he kind of turned. Kind of like in the side back, kind of, because he turned to see what was going on when sure. he smelled smoke. Um, sure. So I'm going to use <laughs> one raise, of, of course, to, to make the shot. I would like to use another one. Whew. I would like to use another one to also reduce their uh, crew brute squad by another four, which is my okay. finesse ranking. All right. And then the other two for wounds for him. Okay. Sure. All right. Yeah. You start and you get, you know, some of the brutes that were like with him, they go down and he gets, he gets, you know, hit. And then he kind of turns back to you, sort of, because he's also kind of looking at Gianni right now. So Gianni, go ahead and use your taking another lash. I take a lash. Okay. So that's. Four. Five. Uh, five, four, five, I think, total now. Yeah, okay. I'm going to be paying them out uh, today or tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, so you do that, and he gets hit. Uh, you know, he kind of, he kind of, you know, you reach out like that. He gets shot, and then you, like, pull him over. And so he kind of, like, goes down into the water. Um. And the... <laughs> The, the the translator um kind of looks at you looks looks down looks in the water and he dives in after the captain after silent death so you can you know walk back onto the Utrecht if you like at this point the other pirates are kind of like whoa what just happened so at this point the pirates that are on uh the ship are going to start heading back to the whisper um you know they're 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 like we got to save our stuff we got to see if we can save the ship you know we got to do this that and the other thing so they're kind of just sit, you know doing that you know and trying to help get the captain out of the water you know throwing you know ones that are might still be over and they whisper are throwing ropes over the side meanwhile everybody on the utrecht is trying to get to the other side to get to the boats and stuff like that so, um, yeah, so I'm going to say at this point that eventually everybody um, uh, gets on gets on the ships, the long boats, um, the pirates, you can hear them on the other side of the ship uh, shouting to each other, and you just see smoke. And now you can see, you know, just before you get on the ships and they're, and they're kind of lowered and stuff like that, you see flames coming out from, from the cabin of, of the Whisper. And um, you're kind of lowered down. Um, Amelia and anybody else who who's kind of on the on the last or taking charge of one of the things, the captain is not on on the ships with you. Um, he's still he gave that order and has not moved. Uh, he's standing on top of the the Utrecht um, with his hands crossed. Um, like this and as time as you know I'll let you all if if anybody would like to um, I'll let everybody okay what's everybody going to do at that point are you getting on boats are you going to try to talk to each other are you checking on any of the crew what what is everybody what's everybody kind of doing I'm I'm going to be mostly making sure that at least the my compatriots, the other heroes, and then as well Charles, and uh, the Pip and Squeak. You know, I want I want to be sure that the crews and the longboats are getting uh, unlashed properly and being let down as they're getting full. But seeing the captain, I'm going to start heading toward him. So I'm going to be like checking the boats. And making sure people are getting on and getting situated as I go down that side uh, of the ship and heading for the captain. Okay. I am not on right. one of the boats yet. I am still on the Utrecht. Okay. Andreas, are you on one of the... What, how's Andreas going to handle this? Is, are you getting on one of the boats right away? Are you, I think you have a prisoner. Oh, no, you don't. You let him go. You had a, you had a little bit of go. Yeah, so yep, he's gone. I let him go. Um, 
I think uh, Andreas is kind of more concentrating on making sure that like if if sailors are saying if the if the sailors from the Utrecht are like grab that barrel we'll need it and um like you know like supplies and that kind of stuff that are probably being rapidly brought up so that we can survive on the on uh, on the ocean <laughs> to get to shore or you know uh so yeah. I imagine Andreas is more trying to help out with that stuff as best as possible. You know, like he's probably one of the people that's like running below decks as people are telling him like what to grab and take up. Yeah. You start noticing that um, there's also been, you know, with the mass coming, it's done so much damage. Like the ma what happened was when you go down and you're grabbing supplies and things like that and everyone's trying to, to be like, oh crap, we got to get out of this situation. The mast fell and fell onto the ship. And what it did is the impact started splitting boards underneath it. So you get down there and you're you're in water at this Between point. like the cannon shots coming from like the <laughs> side and yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, the mast has come and started busting, um, you know, that stuff up. And so you're getting supplies from there. Um, and, and doing that. But you know that, this, that at least the Utrecht is taking on water at this point. Um, I imagine I have to drag Charles away from his books. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Charles, Charles, somebody, somebody, if somebody doesn't, he's going to be trying to go down there if someone doesn't stop him. Yeah, that, I'll make that. That, that. That's what I'll do. That'll be my specific actions. I'm dragging Charles away. Yeah, he's exact words. tears. He has like dirty tears coming down his face. My books, my books, my glasses. Where were my books? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Andreas will. Uh, Andreas says he has him like from the by the back of the by the back of the shirt, dragging yeah. him along. Going, you can't write anything if you're dead. <laughs> and he's listing off books that he has. You know, he's like. My copy of the Chronicles of Andorus, you know, and he's just listing through all these books that he had. And... He did mention that we probably could have left these. Uh, and he just kind of turns and looks at you. like Earned the dirty look. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Gianni, uh, what are, what is, how is Gianni uh, uh, dealing with all this? Uh, you can do, I mean, whatever you like. I mean, you could... Take, try to take out some more pirates as they're leaving. You could go to the... I mean, any of you could. I mean, whatever I, uh, Gianni feels like doing <laughs> in this I situation. have a hero point left. I'm headed to this captain's uh, quarters. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you see the captain is not even even looking at you. He's, he's you know, standing on top of the, you know, and he's just watching uh, the whisper... And he's kind of just looking around. So, yeah, you can go down to the captain's quarters. All um, I want is my uh, symbol of the prophet that I paid with to get on the boat. Right. Okay. Yeah, sure. So that's easy enough. You spend your hero point to to, to get in there. Yep. And, uh, yeah, you find it uh, in the captain's trunk. Um, the box you had seen there earlier is not there. Um, the one that you were specifically said you were going to come back for later. Um <sighs> That's not there. Probably some uh, nice I, earrings in there too, though. There are some nice earrings in there as well. Um, if I can grab it, I will. Yeah. I just grab what I can with a hand and I head back out. All right. And are you going to head to one of the long boats? Yes, I will. All right. Uh, Nanette. So I assume she's getting on. Oh, yeah. The first available long boat. She is in it. Um... <laughs> I'm going to children first. And she's just. 100 percent. she's like we don't know what we're doing we're just gonna get into the boat just um but when she's in the boat and she she'll try to help load stuff if anybody's injured she'll you know do some quick first aid sort of um situation but as as terrified as she is she's she's doing her best uh-huh so you um you uh see across you know you're getting on the boat and you're helping the children on you look across and you see um you know the montane gentleman uh over on the other side and, and the pirates are also like using boats and they seem to be trying to put out a fire of some kind you see him over there he's very injured 
Um, but he catches sight of you and he smiles and winks at you, even hurt. And, uh, and yeah, and then you can get on the boat and, and uh... she lifts up her hand and points to like a really big engagement ring <laughs> and then points. <laughs> she hasn't pawned that yet. Yeah, she's, she has not pawned that. <laughs> um all right amelia you were you were heading towards the captain i was uh and is what i do as i'm making sure everybody's getting on the uh the boats um i'm like well it's not worth going down with it's an old wife's fable get in the boat he looks at you and he says, it is if I can take him with me as well. <laughs> He's already down there. He's already in the drink. You don't have to take him with you. I don't trust it. And he reaches out and he goes to put a hand on your shoulder. If you stay, just make sure Gunner doesn't get off this boat. That, he, he, he looks down and Gunner had been like trying to crawl like away. And, uh, and the captain just puts his foot on him. Good. And her groans. <laughs> um, well, it, if by chance you get down there and he's not there, then try to find a way back up. And it was, it was, uh, it was my pleasure sailing with you. And then I run off because I want to go get my chest from below decks. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna holler at you. He says, Ace! Aye! That man, Exeter. Yeah? He's not exactly what he seems to be. I tip my hat and then I I run off. Okay. Alright, so you're gonna grab your, your chest and everything. I would like to try to get down there and get my chest. I, I have another I have an heirloom an heirloom gun in there that I would like to keep. If yeah, alright, so um, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll make you roll. That's going to be a risk trying to, you, sure. you go down. Um, uh, so we'll say you need two raises to get down there, get through the water, grab your trunk and, uh, bring, we'll say three to bring it back up. We'll need one to grab, to get down there, one to grab the trunk and one to, to bring it back up okay. or at least whatever you want from it. So no, that's fine. I would like to assist with a hero point. Um, thank you. Uh, this as, is not going to uh, be a as, good roll for me. Uh, as uh, as Ace runs down, um, uh, uh, Andreas will say, "We'll hold the boats for you." <laughs> yeah, you see him Thank dragging you. Charles, like who's 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 in tears, crying about his books. I take some comfort in seeing that Charles is crying, hearing what <laughs> the captain just said. <laughs> but I'm not going to do anything else. Um, so, with that hero point, does that mean I get? Ex three extra die? Three Sweet. extra dice. Yeah. So is this a brawn athletics? Yeah, I'd say. Okay, cool. So, yeah. uh, okay, cool. Just give me one second. Yep. For sure. All right. Well, I see two zeros, so that's good. And, uh... Let's see, how can I make this work? So do that and that. That is four raises. Four, excellent. Yeah, so you get down there well enough, grab your stuff, um, grab what you want and, and head back up. Um, I'm gonna, I'd like to throw my chest into whichever boat Charles and Andreas on and I'm gonna kind of aim for Charles a little bit. 
<laughs> not it's not gonna look on purpose. I'll be like, oh, oh dear. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> He's the one that looked through your small clothes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so everybody can um uh, so um Gianni, after you do that, are you gonna head to one of the boats at that point after you take your oh, stuff? Yeah. Right. So at this point, everybody is on the lawn boats, and the lawn boats have been uh, put down into the into the um, into the water. Uh, the captain is is still up there, um, and you hear a song in Vestin coming from coming from the Utrecht as it kind of goes goes you know as you see it kind of getting lower and lower in the water as the lawn boats are 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 pulling away and they're still now the whisper is kind of ablaze and you still hear the 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 shouting and and the Utrecht is is um going down and you hear a song in Beston. Um Amelia okay the linguists would know right uh Gianni and Andreas know Beston if I remember right. Yes Amelia know Beston you say me? Yeah. Does Amelia, does Ace know Vestin? Um, I her? actually, it's not one of the languages on my sheet, but I would say that I would probably recognize the song maybe just from sailing on the ship with them. Yeah. I've probably been picking it up working amongst the Vessin. It's, it's a song about, uh, meeting your ancestors and, and joining them, uh, in the afterlife and um you know being welcomed you know as a hero and someone who stood strong uh for their beliefs and and did their duty as much as they could and yeah uh the long boats are pulling away um the storm starts to subside the storm that had been raging uh you know uh, water splashing it, it you know this type of storm was when the rains the, the the waves were going and it was thundering and lightning and there were clouds and stuff but it wasn't really a, a raining but it starts to clear um and you realize it's only um you know as this the sun starts to uh to come out you realize that it's only like noon maybe because this all started to happen at like dawn really uh, not long after dawn so it, it's not that far uh, into the day um, now that everything starts to clear. Um, the ships are kind of getting farther and farther away from the Utrecht. And, um, you know, you can still hear kind of in the distance the, the pirates and everything like that. Um, so Nanette. You're on the lawn boats and you hear whispering again, much like, you know, you usually hear. And the whispering is saying, bring it to you. Bring it back. Use it. You've already marked it. You know you want to. And she thinks she chooses to ignore it and puts on a brave face and instead says something like, Oh, well, that is far more exciting than I think my honeymoon could have been. <laughs> The crew and I married? just look at you like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So actually, um, so Nanette, you're going to ignore uh, the the little whispering. Yeah, she's been doing that for like twenty some odd years. That's fine. Uh, 
So you all also, um, you know, even even Amelia, you know, kind of gets this this you know this this feeling. Um, and Amelia, you're not really sure where it's coming from. You know, it's just it, it's just this feeling, like this thing is calling to you, and it and all 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 three of you, and it's it's you know Nanette hears the whispering. And to Andreas, the Davis is going, oh, it's so close by now. It's so close. You could reach out and grab it, you know, and use it for yourself. And for uh, Gianni, you're feeling like fate strings, like, like, tighten. Like very much like the ones you you saw like when you were following them to the captain's quarters earlier, and uh, um, and Amelia, you kind of like have this vision of the bracer, like floating on, you know, a piece of of wood. That is shocking to me. This is news. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so Andreas, your Davis is going to point in a direction. And Amelia, by the vision you saw, you kind of know what direction to look as well. Um, and Andreas uh Gianni, you can you can feel the pull, you know, what direction the pulling is and and you can hear the direction of the whispers, Nanette, as well. Um, and if you all look in that direction, you can definitely see, uh, the, the me a metal box, Gianni would recognize it, Nanette would recognize it, Amelia would recognize it, Andreas probably- Picks it up, it goes, what? <laughs> yeah, hasn't seen it before, but you see it there, um, floating, like, like floating, kind of trying to, uh, come to the lawn boat. So I'm uh, the only one who has no idea what this is. I pick it up. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end today. Nice. Nice. With the sentient magical object. <laughs> I'm used to it. With with the guy <laughs> with the demon. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. That's not confirmed. It is a Davis. <laughs> Just because the Church of the Prophet says they're demons... I mean, they say a lot of things are demons, so I mean. <laughs> well, I. You're not I, wrong. <laughs> I thank you, everybody out there, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next Tuesday at the same time for chapter three and see what the heck they're going to do with this thing. Now they're out in the ocean in these long boats. Um, they're in quite a situation at this point. Um, so. Come, come and join us next week and find out what's going to happen with these uh, characters. And I wish you fair winds and following seas. See you next time.